that we're able to swap out our images, now we're ready to actually start extending our update employer API. And we'll give the employer the option to change their company name and also their email. And we'll add two input fields in the next video and get that working. But first we need to set up our API. If we uh, go to our checklist, so in this video we're gonna be extending our employer update API and we'll need to make some changes to a few files. We'll update our employer view model. We already have that created and we'll just add a couple properties to that. And then we'll jump into our API, the uh, update API, and we'll put in a couple if statements there just to check to see if they're adding the email, image, or company name. If they're not, we won't make any changes, but if they are, uh, we'll, we'll make the changes in the database and we'll set that up. Towards the end, we're gonna do a little refactoring. I found a better way of doing something and we'll get into that later on uh, and we'll change that around. And then towards the end, we'll make sure we test this, this API and make sure it's working. We'll do that towards the end. So let's start on these two first. Open up our employer controller, so control P and employer controller. And then the work we'll be doing is inside of the update API. So uh, inside here. So right now what we're doing is we're only passing in one property inside of this view model. And if you actually click on that and hit F12, so we're only passing in the profile image. Now all these fields within this view model are not required. So they could fill out one thing and not fill out the other. So each of these are optional. And we'll do a bunch of checks for that in our API in a second. But let's go ahead and add a couple more properties. So they'll be able to change their company name and that's gonna be a string and company name. And then also they'll be able to change their email. So uh, that's gonna be a string as well. And that's pretty much it we need to do in our model. Uh, let's save this, shut this down, and Control-P again, reopen up our employer controller. And back in our API, we should have now an option of three properties in here. So right here, I'll do a bunch of checks to see if these fields are and something like that. So we'll do a bunch of checks right here. Uh, let's start on the company name. So if there's a company name, company name, and if that's not equal to null, then we'll go and we'll do this. And this one's gonna be pretty easy actually. So the employer from DB, we should have a company name property in there and that's gonna be equal to model company name. And that's pretty much it for that. Copy this. And we'll do something uh, similar with the email. We're gonna have to come back and make some more changes to this email in this video. But for now, I'll just do it this way. So email, and then we'll test the API, make sure this part's working before uh, we change, make the other changes. So this is email and email. And then now uh, we'll do our image and I'll just paste this right here and change this over to profile image, I think we called it. Image, yes, that's it right there. So if that's not equal to null, then we're gonna do something in here. And what we're gonna do is what we did here. So let's go over what, what's going on here real quick. So right here, uh, we checked the database to see if the image exists or not, if they have an image URL. Like when they're creating an account, they're not required to create a profile image, it's optional. So it might be null in the database. So if it is not null, then go in and clear out our storage, grab the URL and clear it out of our storage, do some housekeeping, and then uh, push up the new image to our storage, get the URL, and then go and put it in the database and you know basically replace what we just had here. So this, I'm just gonna cut out of here and we're gonna optionally do this. So we'll only do this if there's an image here, if they added one and I'll just paste that in here. That's pretty much it for that, get rid of the space. So we'll have to come back and change the email like I said before, but this is pretty much what, what you want it to look like for now. Uh, let's save this and let's just test this real quick, make sure it's working. Make sure you restart your application. So I'll shut it down, hit up and run it. And let's open this up in Postman. All right, so I have the update API. Uh, ready so right here it's localhost 5000 api employers update and then the user id and now also let's set up a new fresh token make sure we do that so we'll go ahead and re-log in again and open up our login api 
Uh, make sure you enter in your information, Mike1234. I'll hit send, get a fresh token, copy this token, and jump back in here again. And inside the headers, we'll, we'll replace this token with a fresh token. And then also just double check your IDs. Like I'm always jumping around between different APIs, different projects, and I get my IDs mixed up. So I'll just copy this, just double check that. And if you miss one little configuration with this API, you have all kinds of problems. And I'll replace this. And that should match up. Okay, great. All right, so everything should work. And if we um, hit send. Oh, actually, let's check this before we do that. And here is our, our profile image, our company name, and our email. And all of these are optional. So if you leave a field empty, it should not touch this. It shouldn't change it. And then here, I'll change this. I'll remove the S. And I'm leaving the file, the image empty, and that should not change this. So 7D38, this should remain the same as the URL. Hit send, 7D38, so it did not touch our image, and it did not uh, touch our email. So that our email is the same, and it changed this, good. And let's change this, we'll change this to like test at test.com. Dot com and then I'll copy this so I don't have to type this out again copy this hit send that should change it over very good so I'll, I'll just uh, put that back the way it was though and a real email and then let's select a new image and hit open and then uh, hit send and it should swap out our image and that's all working so everything's working as advertised now we need to set up our email confirmation so when the user uh, swaps out their email we want to send them an email to confirm their email. And the way we were doing that before, we're gonna be changing this in this video, we're gonna be refactoring this. But the way we're doing it is we're passing in a URL and this is who handles the email confirmation. So in their email, they're gonna click on this link, it sends them to localhost 4200 confirm email. And then uh, they, they confirm their email that way. But we're gonna change this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this, get rid of this. And I found a better way of doing that. But for now, um, just to get this part working, we'll, we'll still use this, we'll set this up. So let's set up our email confirmation next. So inside of this if statement, we're gonna send out an email letting the user know to reconfirm their email again. And we'll send out an email right here. So I'll add a comment. The user needs to confirm their email. And we already did something like this in a prior video. If we navigate up to the create API, so inside of the create API, right here we're sending out an email. And let's go over this one more time. So right here we generate a token and we pass in the employer. In this case, we're gonna be passing in the employer from the DB. And then here is how we're getting the URL that whoever's confirming the email later. And we're gonna be changing this by the end of the video. But uh, for now, we'll, we'll use this. And we, we use this key and we pass in this address. That's how we get the URL. Then we assemble the URL. This is basically like a factory that you know just spits out URLs, it assembles everything. And it adds in our token, it adds in our employer ID. We need all that to confirm the email. So here we got a URL string. We add that within our message here to please confirm the email. So all this is gonna stay the same. Then here is where we actually send out the email. Uh, pretty simple. So let's actually copy this. All of this is gonna be exactly the same, so copy. And we'll just go down here and right below here, I'll paste it. And then change this over to employer from DB now. Copy this. Paste and uh, paste it in here as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for sending out our email. And there's one more thing we want to do. Now that they changed their email, they're gonna have to reconfirm it. So if we go check out the database, take a peek in here, like right here is set to true. We want to set that back to false. In other words, they need to confirm their email again. And to do that, we'll just go back here. And right below here, I'll just call it employer from DB. Then email confirmed, and we'll set that to false. All right, so let's save this and restart the application. So I'll shut it down and .NET run. And let's check this out in Postman again. Okay, so back in Postman, I have this um, blank and this blank, we don't need that. We're just gonna be changing our email in this case. 
And then you want to double check your headers here. And now we need this confirm email URL. And again, we're going to be changing this where we don't even need this by the end of the video. But for this uh, testing of this API, as of now, we need that. And you want to make sure that this name matches up with whatever you have going on uh, right here. So if those don't match up, you, you'll get a server error. And then you want to pass in whoever's going to be handling the confirm email. And we already set this up several videos back. And it's localhost 4200 confirm email. And that's who's going to be confirming our email for us. And this should work. And just double check your token, make sure it's still valid. In this case, it is. So I'll leave that alone. And, and we're allowed to use the same emails. Like the email doesn't need to be unique. And make sure it's a valid email because we're actually going to be confirming it. You know, so hit send. Okay. And if we go back to our email, and I just got a brand new email. Now, before we click on this to confirm it, let's go check the database. And right here is it's email confirmed. Now, if we refresh it, it should be zero. And it is. And the reason that is zero is because we set that right here. So if we go back to here and we actually click on this link now, this should confirm the email. All right, email is confirmed. Jump back into the database and this should swap out to one now. And it did. So we just confirmed that we just changed our email and we confirmed it. Now that that is done, let's refactor our code a little bit. So we knocked out step one, step two. Now we're going to refactor it where we don't have to pass in that URL every time we want to reset a password or confirm email. We'll do that next. Now we're ready to change this around. Now I was trying to be clever when I did it this way, like get the URL. Like I needed some way to get the URL, whoever's going to be handling the email confirmation. So I, I thought, well, I'll just pass it in from the front end. Then I was talking to another developer about this and they were saying it's not a really great idea to have it where the front end or spa is responsible for, for the email confirmation. This just should be done on the server side. Like the server is asking for this to, to be confirmed. So you should pass that responsibility onto the server side. Also, whoever's using this API like must know about this. If they don't know about this, they're going to be getting back a bunch of errors and they won't know why. So I don't really like passing that responsibility onto the SPA. So we're going to remove that. So I'm just going to comment this out and then copy this. And I'm going to leave this line in here. So just in case somebody's viewing this on GitHub, they know I changed it over and I'll just paste this right below here and then remove this. And you definitely don't want to do this. Like, um, I'll show you this real quick. You definitely don't want to do something like this. You don't want to have magic strings throughout your application because let's say you do launch this someday, you would have to come in here and change this back and forth throughout all your APIs and that's not really the best practice. So we're going to add this within our app settings file. Let's open that up. Now I don't want to open this one up because this is where I'm keeping all my secret keys and I never push this up to GitHub. So I'm just going to add it here and I'll add it right below here. And let's paste it. And then this is how we'll get our address now. I'm gonna go ahead and add this within my app settings file and I'll be back in one second. Okay, so I added it to the app setting file. I'll close that down. Now the app setting file is where I'll keep my live URLs, my real ones. And then this one will be for the development one for the app setting development, I'll keep these in here. Now that we set that up, I can close this down. And now we need to pull in our configuration file into our employer controller. And we're already doing that within our auth controller. And if I minimize this, and we're doing that right here. So I'll just do the exact same thing we're doing here. So copy this. Then within our employer controller, navigate up to the constructor. We need to bring in our I configuration file. Okay, so we should have access to those properties now. And if we navigate back down here and we'll change uh, this over to config that we want and then dot value and then make sure you close it up. So that should get us the confirm email out of our config file now instead of doing it this way. I like that a lot better actually uh, this way now. Now we want to do the exact same thing we're doing here in the other APIs now. We want to make sure we, we change that over. So save this. And then uh, copy this, make sure I copy that. Then jump up here 
and change this over. I'll just comment it out like I did below and paste this right below. It's the, it's the exact same thing. Then there's one more API we want to change around and that is our change password. So if we go back to our auth controller and go down here and it's this right here. We want to change this over now. So paste and then make sure I copy this, change this over. Okay, and I think that's all the areas that we want to refactor. I'll save this, shut this down and shut this down. And let's test our update API. Make sure that this part is still working. Let's restart the application. So control C, shut it down, up, .NET run. Okay, let's check it out in Postman. Okay, so this should work exactly the same, but now we could comment this out. We don't need that anymore. And if we hit send, this should still work. Okay, great. Now we don't have to do that anymore from, from our spa, add this in. So that's a lot nicer, a lot less code we have to do on the front end. So we basically did everything on our checklist. So we refactored our, our code and we tested the API and it's still working. Now in the next video, we're ready to start working on the front end. And if we go back here, we'll add a couple input fields here and set all that up. And we'll do that next.